All right, here we go. Hey guys, it's Ryan. And in this video today, I want to help you go faster on the track. Before you can go faster on the track, we got to do a few things off of the track. So let's look at those things first. So we may be racing toy cars, but these things are really sensitive when it comes to the way that we set them up. We all know that they respond differently to different setups. So what I want to do is help you go through the car and get it set up properly before we go on the track. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to work on the suspension. Go ahead and take all of the shock bodies off of the car. With the shock bodies removed, let's go ahead and check that all of our suspension arms and the components surrounding them move freely. If they do, you're in good shape. Check for slop and some extra wiggle and play in here and there and replace the parts accordingly. Too much excessive play or slop in any of these components will create an undesired defect on the track. The car will just handle very inconsistently and it won't do what you want. Now that all this stuff is looking good, feels good, we're gonna rebuild the shocks. This is something that I'm very particular about. It's something that I see and I think a lot of people get wrong or they just ignore it and their shocks are just absolutely horrible. So let's go ahead and get a fresh rebuild on these shocks so that they'll be ready to go on the track. Go ahead, take the shock cap off and dump out all of the old shock oil. I usually like to let my shock sit for just a second before I do anything else, just so that all of the old oil can drip out of the shock body. Now, if you don't know what sort of shock oil we're gonna put back in, pistons, stroke length, all of these other things, as far as a setup is concerned, I recommend checking out the site that I've linked in the description box that gives tons of setups for most of the RC cars out there. So go ahead, find the one that is yours and a setup that you know is going to work at the track you're gonna be racing at and build it accordingly. Okay, so now that we know what we're going to be putting into the shock and how we're gonna set it up, let's move on. Before I put any shock oil into them, I like to check that my stroke length is going to be the appropriate length. This is just the measurement of the shock shaft when it reaches its full extension. Grab something that you can use to measure in millimeters and measure the length of the shock shaft at its full extension. This is very important that you get it to how it's supposed to be set up and make sure that they're equal on both sides. If you have one that's a little bit longer than the other, it will create an undesired effect on the track and the car will be very inconsistent turning from one direction to another. So it's very important that we get this measurement right. Let's go ahead and dump our oil into the shock body. Carefully hold the shock body, pour it in. And now it's very important to move the shock shaft up and down just a little bit so that all the air bubbles that are underneath the piston can escape. Once you do that, you'll see a lot of tiny little air bubbles in there. Give it a few minutes and let most of that air get out. If you can, let all of it get out. Once you've let the shock body sit for just a moment and let most of that air get out, we're going to put the shock cap on the top of the shock body. Now I know that a lot of different cars have a different way of doing this, but if yours is like mine, there's usually a little screw on the top of the shock body that will allow us to bleed the shock body properly. So go ahead and remove that screw from the shock cap. Carefully thread the shock cap back on top of the shock body and make sure that it is nice and tight. Bleeding these properly will allow the shock piston to move through the shock body the way that it should. 
The reason why I do this and say this is because I see a lot of cars on the track that get this wrong. So what I'm trying to do is help everyone get it right so that the car handles the way that it should. Grab the shock body. I usually like to have a rag handy so that when I start bleeding out the excess oil, it's not gonna get all over my workbench. So go ahead, push the shock shaft slowly through the chamber and you'll start to see some excess shock oil come out of the bleed hole. With the shock shaft fully depressed, go ahead and put the set screw back in. Now don't tighten it down all the way just yet. What I like to do is let the shock naturally sit how it would like to. It usually comes out about maybe halfway or more and then go ahead and push it back in again. This will make sure that the proper balance of fluid to shock components on the inside is just right. Once you get it right, once you let go of the shock body, it should look something like this. If it pushes all the way back out, you have too much pack. So go ahead and do the bleed process again. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put the shocks back on the car and we're gonna set the ride height. Ride height is very important. Getting this wrong will either give you not enough traction, the cars will jump wrong, or it will just do something that you don't want it to do. So we're gonna get this right. Referencing back to the setup sheet that you found on that other website, let's go ahead and plug in the ride height that you need. A very, very handy tool is gonna be a ride height gauge like this one. Any ride height gauge will do as long as it can reach the appropriate height. If you try and use an on-road ride height gauge on an off-road buggy, it's probably not gonna work because it's not tall enough. Good spot to measure is gonna be in the middle of the chassis, right where the A-arms are in line with the chassis. When you're adjusting the shock bodies, make sure that you have the same length on both sides. If one is adjusted different than the other, it will create a different spring rate, and again, creating an imbalance in the car. So grab that little measurement that you have that you use to measure the stroke, and you can use it to measure how far down the shock collar is on each side. Make sure that it is the same again. Don't want any imbalances in the car. We're trying to get consistency in this setup. Last part of the car setup that we're going to make adjustments to. If you don't have one of these, this is a camber gauge. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use it to make sure that the angle of the tires are where we want them to be. Most setups are right around negative one camber on front and rear setups. Sometimes they're different. Again, reference that setup sheet that you have in front of you and go ahead and plug in the angle that is appropriate. Now it helps if all your turnbuckles are pointed in the right direction. If you notice the threads go a certain way when you put them on the car, a lot of them have the little ring on them. What I like to do on my car is have them all aligned in the same way so that when I'm doing a forward or a backward adjustment, it's gonna do the same thing on all of them. It's kind of a pain in the butt if they're all mixed up. Again, super important to get this right on all sides of the car, left and right, because if you don't and you have you know, something like two on one side and zero on the other, the car is gonna do something weird when you go in one direction versus the other. So this is something that I like to check every single time I go on the track, because when you hit something or you crash, something happens, this adjustment can get tweaked because it just pushes in on the turnbuckles. So, I like to check this frequently to make sure that the car is getting the appropriate angle on all of my camber legs. Now that we have a freshly rebuilt suspension, everything is moving the way that it should. We replaced any bent or broken parts. Our car is balanced and ready to go. Okay, so now, how do we go faster now that we're on the track? This is something that it may sound like it's reverse psychology or something weird like that. But we've all heard it so many times. Slower is faster. Let me give you an example. I was just watching a recent race with Ryan Cavallari, and it was a two-wheel mod buggy A-Main, okay? 
and he was out on the track, he's ripping it, he was in the lead, and there was this one section of track where there was this massive triple. A lot of the guys were not really making it, and these are the top tier drivers out there right now. I remember, he didn't have that much of a lead on the guy behind him, and he went through the corner that was right before the massive triple, and I, I noticed that he didn't really come out of it clean. The car was a little bit squirrely. And so what did he do? He checked up and he double singled. Ryan Cavallari, world champion driver, just went slower. Why? Because he knew that it was more important to keep moving forward, to not crash, to not risk it. He needed to just keep going on in the race because if he crashed, he would lose all kinds of time. So what am I saying? A lot of times I see guys that are in like the C main, the B main, they're out there having fun, but then they get frustrated because they know that their lap times, if they were consistent enough, they might actually be fast enough to be in the A main, but they're not. Why? It's because they make too risky of decisions on the track. So what's my point? Slower is faster. Know when and where you should push the issue. Most times, it's going to be better if you just take the safe route and not crash, not get pissed off at a turn marshal and that sort of thing, and just finish the race. I mean, worst case scenario, you go for something that you can't really make, and then you break, and you're out of the race. Second tip on the track. Anytime that somebody is faster than you, comes up on you and they pass you, do your absolute best to follow them. Try your absolute best to just copy the racing line that they're doing right in front of you. A lot of times you'll learn something. You'll see how they're clearing a double from the inside line or they're getting through a rhythm section and they're doing it way faster than you because they're hitting it in a different sequence or something along those lines. It's something that I do all the time. When somebody faster than me passes me, they're doing something I'm not doing so I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna see if I can use it myself. The last tip that I have for you guys for on the track, it's something that my dad used to tell me all the time. Right before my race would start, he would tell me, race your race, focus on your car. There's a lot of stuff that goes on up there on the driver's stand, people yelling at each other, people yelling at turn marshals, just a lot of commotion that it really has nothing to do with you and your race, what you're doing. So do your absolute best to just focus in on your race. One of the mental cues that I used to give myself would be, it's just practice. So right before that main tone goes off and you're about to go into five minutes of chaos or stress, just try and speak to yourself over and over again if you get too worked up. It's just practice, it's just practice. Because at the end of the day, we are just racing toy cars, but we are having fun and we do love this hobby. So do your best to use these things to put yourself in a place that you can enjoy this hobby as much as you can. Because at the end of the day, nobody likes to get mad at somebody else or get super frustrated with their car. We just wanna have fun. We just wanna enjoy it. We wanna go fast and we wanna have fun. I hope these tips help you guys get in your car super dialed on setup and balanced so that it behaves the way you want it to on the track and it's consistent. And then when you're on the track, use the guys that are faster than you to your advantage and block out all the things that have nothing to do with your race and your car. If you do all these things, I guarantee you, you're gonna be a lot faster than you were the last time. And hopefully you'll have more fun too. So I hope you guys like these tips. If you want a more in-depth technical analysis of some aspect of the hobby, please let me know in a comment down below and I'll be happy to look into that for you and make a video about it. Well, that's it for the video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. I am gonna make lots more content in the future. So please sub if you haven't and I will see you guys in the next one.